Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm gonna do a tour of our 2022 garden because, well, I wanted to, and uh, it's just been hot and I've been busy, but I've got a little bit today and it's not too bad this morning so far. So yeah, 2022 garden. It looks a little barren at the moment. It, it's a big garden, you know, it's not small. I believe we made it 100 by 100 in, in feet. It's relatively square, if not perfectly square. So we'll go over what all we planted. So we did cucumbers here. We had watermelon and cantaloupe, and I'll, I'll get back to this in a minute. And then we've also got, you know, ornamental corn, uh, beans, we got peppers and tomatoes down there, and then squash. But, you know, oddly enough, the squash is not done too hot this year, probably because it's just been hot but we had this whole hill planted to squash and it just did not it just didn't materialize all that well which i'm not complaining because i'm not a huge fan of squash but everybody else in the house seems to like it all right and and it does make good filler i mean it's there are worse things than squash but anyway we'll go ahead and start up here with the with the cucumbers they're looking a little sad but they're they're nearing the end of their life cycle we planted some of those uh I'm trying to think because I don't remember all the varieties of what all we planted, but I'm pretty sure, let's see, these are the lemon cucumbers. They're just, they're smaller, and as they get bigger, they will turn yellow, but they're still kind of ripe, you know? Well, kind of like that right there. They're good. I mean, they don't really get bitter, not like those Boston pickling cucumbers, but I suppose that's why they're called pickling cucumbers is because, you know, they get bitter, but... We planted some lemon cucumbers and then these little round looking bastards that look like gourds. There's one of them right there. It's a little small yet. I just picked a bunch of these yesterday, but these are also really good. I, what are they called? Midgets? Something like that. They look like, you know, they look like gourds. They'll get about that big around when they're pretty well ripe. And color wise, they're similar to the, uh, to the lemon cucumbers there. But they're, they're pretty good too. You know, they're still, there's still kind of flower in some down here, but they're, they're nearing the end of their life cycle, which is why they look kind of sad. Uh, it happens. I'm not complaining too much because I'm getting, I'm getting tired of watering stuff out here. So before we, you know what, we'll come back to the melons last because that's a whole, that's a whole story in of itself. And I don't know if the camera's going to get hot and shut off or not. So now squash, we did, I, I don't know what this is, I don't remember. It's flat and looks stupid. And then, you know, spaghetti squash. This was supposed to be uh, acorn squash, but it was spaghetti squash. I guess the acorn squash didn't come up after all. And, you know, this squash plant looks kind of sad because I sprayed it yesterday for squash bugs. Those get real bad, and if we look down through here, you guys can't see it, but yeah, I I killed a good number of them. I may have to hit it again. I hate to spray stuff when it's flowering because that kills the pollinators, and I, I don't like putting chemical on stuff, but sometimes you have to. Like, uh, like with the beans here. So we got a whole row of these damn beans, you know, and these have had, let's see, a lot of these were eat off pretty darn bad because of the blister beetles. And then after I got them sprayed and they recovered, the beetles came back again, but I got them earlier this time with the spray. So the beans, they look sad, yeah, but they're not, they're not bad, believe me. And then the corn, you know, it's been doing phenomenal if I can stop the rakens from chewing it off. And they're, you know, the rakens are tied to why those melons are pulled, just to kind of build suspense there. But yeah, corn's not looking too bad. It's just ornamental. It's nothing fancy. I don't think any of this is an edible variety. I suppose you could eat the ornamental stuff, but why would you? We put in a row of ornamental corn last year, but the wind came up and just beat it to death. Haven't had that kind of wind this summer, and it's... Crap, it's almost September. Oh, man, it's almost September. Anyway, we haven't had wind that was too bad, but it has been hot been very hot and then some more of the beans got some red beans and then i think we also put in some pinto beans well brown beans 
So yeah, the beans have done good. The corn has done good. Goodness knows I've put enough water to all this. Now the peppers, see the peppers always do good. I don't have to worry about them much. You know, they're not putting on too much yet down here. I think these are the anchos. There's some like right in there. They're, they're putting them on. We got some anchos planted. I think we planted some poblanos. Maybe I'm thinking of something different. But we also planted some bell peppers, green bell, purple bell, and then we also did uh, banana peppers, which are down here. And the banana peppers always do pretty well if I keep the bugs off of them. Because what happens is, see if I can find one here. Um, what happens is on that end there, they'll start to get brown and mushy. That's bugs. They'll start eating them. Well, here, you can kind of see it already starting just a little bit. Uh, but they're doing good. That one's ready to be picked right there. That's a good, that's a good one. Yeah, they're doing pretty good. And the peppers, that's probably, we use a lot of peppers. They're, they're good. Garden peppers are a lot better than store-bought peppers. So they're doing good. Down here, we come to the tomatoes. The tomatoes are doing what they usually do, which is grow up really big and bushy. And maybe they'll flower a little bit, like right here. And then they won't put on any fruit, except, and I'll explain that in a minute, but we'll go ahead and come down on to here, this end, where these scraggly little bastards are putting on tomatoes like it's going out of style. But these big plants, I haven't seen one green tomato on them. I've barely seen any flowers all year. There's some, there's some, but see, I think this plant right here, no, it wasn't this plant. It was that one down there that got just stripped down to the stem. The blister beetles come in and eat all the leaves. And Dad came through and sprayed them. And we haven't had problems with beetles on the tomatoes since. So, you know, it's looking good. And this one actually has quite a few flowers on it, as you can see. But these little ones are always the ones that produce. And they are good. I mean, my gosh, if you've never had fresh tomatoes, you're missing out. Ugh, they're a lot better than store-bought. So, I uh, this morning I come out and I dug the works to help get some more water on the plants because before this was all essentially just flat through here and so you'd put water on it and just run off. But because I wasn't watering the tomatoes every, every day, more like every other day, they don't need to be watered every day. You know, you don't want to waterlog them or they won't grow. That's a mistake I made last year. I watered them every day. I probably put 80 gallons a day on them. And they didn't grow any better than this. So, but you don't want to overwater them. But, you know, the water running off and not having a chance to soak into the soil, especially since it's hard down there. You know, you get past that loose topsoil and it's all hard down there. So I wanted to give the water a chance to, uh, to soak in. And it's, it's doing pretty good. It'll take me about a week to get this the water table in this area brought up. But it's, it's hard to do because the surrounding area is just so dry it'll pull that moisture away. So it's an uphill battle. There are some... There used to be marigolds in between every tomato plant. It was supposed to help keep away bugs. But all... I mean, it didn't repel the blister beetles, which is the big thing that we wanted them to do. And they also started getting webworms on them. So I started pitching them over the fence. That one's probably going to go before too long. It's all right for now. And then you saw there's another one uh, down there that it's okay for now. So, so yeah, not, not too bad so far. I mean, they look pretty and they don't take any water. My gosh, I've hardly watered those marigolds and they have not turned any, any lighter all summer. They've stayed a nice dark green, so they're not hurting at all. But, you know, can't have webworms on them. That's no good. So this right here is what I've been using to keep pretty much the whole garden worked up and stop the weeds and the blister beetles from showing up. Stupid pig weeds. They love them damn pig weeds. Now, like right here in the fence, I, I can't do much about that. I broke my, well, I call it a wick whack. It's, it looks, um... Uh, I can't think of how to describe it, but basically you can, you take your hand, you can swing it this way. It's almost like a, a scythe and it'll, 
it'll cut stuff down but i finally hit one too many big old weeds and the end of the handle there did not appreciate that so that was the end of the wick whack but the tiller right here has been that's what i've been working most of the time this thing is a nightmare to you're fighting it constantly because i don't know if you can tell probably not too well but it about right here where the corn is it starts really sloping downhill awfully hard and so when you're tilling this side always wants to dig in at kind of like an angle so you're trying to fight it and then it always wants to turn um to the right and it's just it's really irritating but i've I've kept her pretty clean out here. It's been a struggle, but I've kept it pretty clean. I'll come through with the hoe and just hoe up little weeds every day, just stay ahead of them. And and I mean, it's work. This is the cleanest this ground's ever been. So I'm not, not displeased with it. That's a benefit to it being so stinking hot is that nothing will grow. But the downside is nothing will grow. So just been a lot of work coming out here taking care of this. It eats up a good chunk of my morning. And then by afternoon for most of the summer, you know, it's just too hot to really go do anything else. So the melons here, oh man, I wish I, I wish I'd been able to film this or take pictures. I should have taken pictures when the melons were in good shape, but they, they came out to about here on this side. And then they came out a little further on the other side, not quite as much, but we planted them in that hill and then they would come out, you know, to this other post man i had so many cantaloupe and so many watermelon on here uh but rakens raccoons rangoons trash pandas whatever you want to call them uh you know they keep getting in the garden and they kept tearing stuff up i kept losing fruit to them you know this is where the cantaloupe started thereabouts and this is dried down they've been pulled for a couple days but I'll bring you over here to show you, just give you an idea of how many melons I've pitched over the fence. I mean, I had a hellaciously good crop of cantaloupe and watermelon, uh, as you can probably see out here. You know, I pitched a lot of them over the fence. Because for a while, I left them because I thought, all right, you know what, I'll go ahead and I'll keep trying to fix the fence and, and keep them out. But eventually, it just got so stinking bad and I... At this stage, it's September. We haven't even planted the winter pasture. I've got other stuff to do, which you know, sounds awfully hypocritical because I'm out here filming instead of going and doing that other stuff. But this is only a few minutes. You know, most days I'm so stinking busy trying to screw the other stuff that this was an enormous hassle. This was half of the time I spent out here trying to water all this. I mean, I'd spend an hour watering this to get enough water on it. And to my credit, you know, it stayed moist as long as the leaves stayed over it and kept it shaded. I mean, it stayed moist, but I was just barely keeping ahead of it. The most recent spot that they got through was right here. They haven't been through it uh, since yesterday. They came through yesterday. But to fix the fence, well, to fix the fence to try and keep the rakins out, we built Hillbilly Alcatraz. So as you can see, we've got... Um, we got this piece, you know, you've got the upright fence, you know, and then we've got some three foot welded wire and stuck it over the outside, had her angled down so that they couldn't crawl up and then, you know, up and around and, and come back. And then we also came through and this was a bit of work, but we came through here along the whole fence and stitched it in so that they can't stick their stupid little heads through and squeeze through it. They can't get through that. So what the bastards did instead was they started digging under, which prompted me to come up with this solution, which is to take all this old barn tin, because there's no shortage of that around here, and I dug a trench with the hoe, which is incredibly difficult, because this ground's hard as stone, that's no joke. Uh, but I dug a trench right up against where the bottom of the wire was, and put the tin in and buried it, and they're not, they're not getting through that. Let's see, where's that? They had a hole where they came through on this side before I put the tin up right here that's where it is right where that trash is at and you could they came back a couple times to try to dig under the tin but you know it it held up but you know the problem is we'll get, see because they'll dig like right here they started digging under again and then if they can't get through then they'll just keep testing the fence constantly and for about a week 
I thought I had him beat. I thought I had him kept out. And then all of a sudden, when my third round of melons were coming to ripen on all this, that's when they got in. They took out half the crop one day and, oh, that's cool. That's cool. I don't think the bee's gonna win, but you know, I wanna save him, but I don't know that I can kill that wasp without killing the bee. I like bees. I mean, I don't want them to sting me or anything, but they're, they're nice little bugs. So yeah, so some other solutions I came up with was to put another section of uh, smaller square wire on the fence and threaded it on there to stop him from being able to pull it out and then crawl under. And, you know, I used some wood in some spots, but as much of a struggle as it was to fix this fence, it just did not, it just didn't hold up. I, I need to go around the whole thing and see, here's another spot that I fixed. Uh, I just need to go around the whole thing, dig a trench out and take tin like this and then cut it about eight inch wide and just bury it so that they can't, they can't dig under. They can dig down, but they're not digging through that tin and they can't dig down enough to crawl all the way under the tin and there's too much dirt on the back side that they won't be able to push it over and crawl under the fence anyway. But, you know, cat, what are you doing? Oh, he's never mind. He's going to the bathroom. I won't I won't show that on camera. So, yeah, that's the 2022 garden. That's how I lost all my melons, which I hate, you know, cuz we would have been drowned in the damn things, which I would have loved. Corn and stuff looks good, but those those peppers is really where everything matters is right there. So, yeah, between Triple digit heat and no rain. We haven't had rain in three months. Going on three months. Well, two, let's be fair. We haven't had any rain since the end of June. And it's almost the beginning of September. So yeah, two months. Haven't had a drop. We got a tenth of an inch yesterday, day before yesterday. But it's, I mean, it's already gone. It's dry when you don't have rain for, you know, when you don't have rain for two months. And it's triple digits it, it eats it up pretty quick even if you can stop the weeds from growing and you can get the soil to kind of crust over it um it's just a struggle always a struggle so despite that and the bugs and the rakens i've actually managed to keep the garden looking pretty clean and pretty pretty successful right cat oh my gosh panther Oh my goodness, kitty cat. What's wrong, kitty cat? Yeah, weirdo. Kitty, 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 kitty. You got pollen all over your snout, you Fruit Loop. My goodness. Yeah, it looks dry, but there's there's moisture under here. I'm at the point now where I can water stuff about every other day because it's cooled off into the into the low 90s instead of being in the mid hundreds in terms of temperature. So that's always nice. And I can water every other day. That saves me some time, which is good because we're going to be planting before too long, I hope, if I can ever get the air conditioner on the tractor fixed. So, you know, garden doesn't look too bad. I'm pretty happy with it overall, all things considered. Uh, I'm not happy about the, the Rangoons getting in, but over the winter, I'm going to make sure they, they won't get in. Next year, the way I'm going to fix the fence over the winter, if next year they can get in here, then they deserve to get in here because I'm I'm not screwing around anymore. I'm not going to do this half-ass fixing to, oh, that should keep them out. No, no, we're not adopting that attitude. See, like right here, can they pull that back and crawl under it? At, at the bottom right there? No, they can't, but they will dig under it. And you can see where they've tried. Got the little place flattened down there, and they, they just won't stop. Because the big problem with raccoons is that they're not completely dumb. I mean, they're destructive little bastards, and they're spiteful, and they're just cruel, but they are not, they are not dumb. Not in the slightest. So, damn them. Wasted so much of my time. If I had the gumption, I'd probably make a video because there's some lessons to be learned and some philosophies to be 
uh, I don't, what's the, what's the phrase? Pulled from, created, recognized, damn bugs, had enough of you. There's some philosophy to be had uh, in analyzing the situation with the melons. There's some life lessons to be learned there. There's some realities to be observed. And if I had the time and the gumption, I'd probably make a philosophical video about it, but I don't have the time. I've gone on for 20 minutes. I think that's more than enough for you guys, assuming you even made it this far. So I'm going to go move on with some other projects, and we'll just catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.